Since the day we talked about the planet Mercury, it has been 11 days. And now we have gotten to Saturn. We had good speed. Do you know how long the drive is from Mercury to Saturn? 1 billion 366 million kilometers. But we went at the speed of the internet. But let's go and talk about the planet Saturn. Saturn is known as the most beautiful planet in the solar system. A lot of people say no, the Earth is the most beautiful. But Saturn is unique in its own way, and it's because of the rings, and that is why it's considered the most beautiful. But all this beauty is from afar. If you get close, there's nothing beauty about it. But when you get close to Earth, it feels like heaven. If Saturn didn't have this ring, it would be considered an ugly old planet. But let's go to the main focus. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system, right behind Jupiter, the biggest planet. You could fit 10 planet Earths in the diameter of Saturn. Scientists say this huge planet is the lightest planet in the solar system. If you didn't know, Saturn is made up of gas and it's a gas planet. And two of the most common gases that make up this planet is hydrogen and helium. Scientists believe that this planet is so light that it would float on water if it could because the molecules cannot sink in water. No planets other than Saturn can do this, even the baby planet Mercury. So only Saturn can do this. You have to know that this planet, just like any planet that's made up of gas, doesn't have a surface and you can't stand on it because there's a core that's made up of ice, rock and water and it has a strong gravity pull and it has collected all this gas around it and has formed this giant planet. You can kind of suggest in theory that if planet Earth starts collecting all the gases and thickening up its atmosphere, it would get bigger and bigger and maybe turn into a gas giant. But around us, there's not that much gas to be collected. So this is not gonna happen ever. The North Pole of this planet is a hellhole. There is a giant hexagon in the North Pole at the size of two planet Earths. In this hexagon, there's kind of a permanent storm. Unfortunately, there's no living thing on Saturn because nothing is gonna survive on this planet and this storm. There is no way to stand on this planet, live on this planet, and right now with today's technology, there's no way to go inside the planet and study it. So we're not gonna think about going there. But we're gonna talk about its moons. Saturn has more than 50 confirmed moons, and the more they study it, the more it adds to the moon. Because there's a lot of objects that orbit this planet, but they're not sure if it's moons or not. One of Saturn's smallest moons is Enceladus, and it's formed with ice. It has a diameter of only 500 kilometers. It's a baby moon, you could say. But the biggest moon is Titan, which has a diameter of 5,150 kilometers, or the size of Canada. Titan is the only moon in the solar system that has a proper atmosphere and clouds. Scientists believe under the ice of Titan in Enceladus, there's oceans, and inside those oceans, they could be life.
All these moons help planet Saturn to have these beautiful rings around it. Saturn's ring is the most complicated ring in the solar system. There's a lot of stuff in this ring, but it mostly consists of ice and rock. And the sizes start from a piece of dust all the way to the size of a mountain. All these stuff are orbiting around Saturn in the shape of this ring you see. If you look at the ring from its sides, you could fit four and a half planet Earths. But the funny thing is, the thickness of this ring is only one kilometers. And that is why you see the ring very narrow. So why is this ring so thin and stretched out? And the reason is because of the small moons around it and the gravity from those moons stretches this ring out. And the gravity causes it to stretch out, get thinner, but bigger. The cool thing is that humans have known this planet for thousands of years. They first thought it was a star, but after the 18th centuries, when telescopes were invented, they noticed that Saturn is a planet. When telescopes were invented and Saturn was discovered, it was really interesting for the astronomers back then. And the ring alone was another world for them. And all the moons it had. So astronomers had a lot of work to do to figure out what's going on with this planet. One year on Saturn takes 29 Earth years. It's really far from the sun, so it makes sense that it takes this long to orbit once. You remember that Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and it orbits the sun in 88 days. And it's because it's the closest planet to the sun. But Saturn is extremely far from the sun. But one day on Saturn takes only 10 hours and 42 minutes long. Meaning in this short time, it orbits around itself once. The speed of this orbit caused that hexagonal storm you see on the North Pole. And that hexagon wants to spin faster than the planet itself. In 1997, NASA sent Cassini towards Saturn to study it and see what is going on, and also study the moons that orbit this giant planet. Most of the things we just explained in this video is thanks to Cassini. It took seven years for Cassini to get to the orbit of Saturn. It finally got there in 2004 and started to do its job. This probe worked for 13 years straight, meaning until the year 2017, and it helped scientists out a lot about this gas giant. NASA decided at the end of Cassini's life to crash it into the gas surface. So it gets destroyed. But before it got to this main gas, it burnt up. We talked about all these planets in the solar system. Only these last two are left. Uranus and Neptune. And when we get to it, we'll make a video about it.